Professor Studdy, we just heard uh, the Secretary of State say that Vladimir Putin uh, has relied on the, uh, these exact elements to wreak havoc. What, what are the elements here that Putin is working with uh, that actually links his effort in Ukraine to what Hamas is doing? Yeah, I mean, for, for clarity's sake, I think we should start by pointing out that there's no particular reason to think that Russia is directly behind what happened in, in, in Israel. But there is good reason, excellent reason, given Putin's own statements and Russian propaganda, to believe that Russia is rejoicing in it. So in, in a very broad sense, what this means is that Russia is glad to see Israel suffer is glad to see the United States put in a, in a difficult position as he sees it and is not resisting, to put it mildly, the kind of rhetoric which is associated with the attack on, on Israel. It's, it's not a coincidence that we just had a big pogrom inside of Russia itself. Narrowly, what the secretary has in mind is that in some sense, both Russia and Hamas are Iranian proxies in the sense that Iran helps both with weapons. And uh, as we go forward, uh, Ukraine now uh, is it has to sort of battle for attention both in Washington uh, and elsewhere uh, because of what's now happening in Israel with Hamas. Yeah, and uh, you know it's a it's a call upon us to think strategically. And you know, our problem with Ukraine has never been really fatigue. I don't like that. You know, they're the ones running the race. We're just holding the cup of Gatorade. We don't get to be fatigued. The problem with us is that is that we are um, we we lack attention span, and war demands attention span. We need to be in a position as we move into the second year of this war to think about what we can do in the middle term to help the Ukrainians to win the war. We need to be thinking that way instead of talking to ourselves about how we're distracted by A, B, and C, because it's a winnable war. You know, the, the Ukrainians did an extraordinary thing this summer and fall, which was to pin down the, Bla the Russian Black Sea fleet and begin to open a corridor for grain shipping. That's an extraordinary victory. Um, they need more weapons faster in order to hurt Russian logistics and to be able to push across land next year. Those are things that we can give them. If there's any upside to the present situation, I hope it's that we will also um, cease listening to, you know, Putin's threats about escalation. With so much else going on, hopefully we can get that psychological distraction out of our minds and just think about what it takes to to end the war, which means winning the war. But uh, and we're seeing it now in the, the budget process in Washington. Historically, there is a dynamic in which everything competes with everything. Uh, and so there's now uh, Ukraine funding is now in there uh, in the in the same com funding competitive environment as funding for Israel. I think the president did what he had to do in the circumstances. I mean, we should keep in mind that President Biden has been dealt a very difficult hand here with these two wars. And I think his, his notion that one tries to get political support by bringing them two together is probably the wisest thing that, that could have been done. So I guess I'd like to see it not so much as, as a competition, but as a gesture that in this particular conjuncture of events, it's time for the United States to take clear action in two places at once, which is something that we have to be able to do. You know, I mean, what the Republicans seem to be proposing is that we'd be able to take action in zero places at once, whereas it should be natural that we can do two things at once. Uh, as we go forward, what do you see as Ukraine's needs in the coming year? That's pretty simple. I mean, so far in this war, we've allowed ourselves to be distracted by essentially Russian performance art involving nuclear war. We've allowed them to talk us into thinking that somehow we were at risk and that the real issue wasn't Ukraine. And so far in this war, we have reacted to what the Ukrainians palpably need, giving them systems that are reacting to what Russia does. In order for Ukraine to win, we have to think about what the Ukrainians proactively need, which is much more air power, which is much more about count what they call counter battery, much more ability to strike Russian artillery. Then we need breakthroughs in mine clearing technology. Um, and, and the Ukrainians need more long range ballistic missiles, which are which are called the TACMs. These things are all thinkable. They can all be done. Many of these weapons are in American stockpiles, which we're going to throw away otherwise. So, you know, I think that's the main thing. Forget about the nuclear performance art. Think about what it takes proactively rather than reacting to each Russian move.